Thank you, Instructor Eric. Uh, welcome to our uh, live streaming for your uh, teens to adults. I'm Chris, this is Instructor Ian, and uh, largely our warm up today is going to be based on trying to develop a lot of warmth and flexibility in the lower body because we're going to be reviewing a lot of kicks. After that, Instructor Brad's going to be jumping in, taking through a whole bunch of boxing and striking drills, and we'll be fun. Then we'll finish off with a philosophy session. So let's get started. First of all, let's just warm up the lower body a little bit, feet in and out. Then let's go diagonal, so twist, twist, nice, just warming up that way. Good, foot checks into the inside of the body. And then just shaking up the leg, shaking it up. And then from here, we're gonna drop back and do alternating spear kicks just to loosen up. Good, just get that hamstring going, get it warm, good. Good, now from here, palms out. We're just gonna to start to run slowly into our palms. Get those quads going. Good. Excellent, now we're just gonna go into a mountain climber. So in the mountain climber position, just dropping down either on fingertips or palms, and just a nice light rhythmical running on this spot. Now I'm gonna ask the instructor Ian to plant his foot, alternating much further up closer to his hands. Good, now it's getting more of a stretch. It's a little bit more work on the heart. But we have an AED in the back and we're all set and ready to go. Good, now jumping to his feet. From here, going into a nice light hip twist, which is like a standard that I do just to get that blood into the lower back area. All right, now we're gonna to go to a standing wall for the, especially for the beginners, you might wanna use the edge of a couch or a chair or just a hand on the wall. Um, for the higher belts, you can start this way and then move away from the wall so that you're bringing in balance into your, the equation. From here, Instructor Ian is going to swing his outside leg, knee high to the front, then to the back, then swing a circle around to the side, and he's just going to continue that motion. Please just do this at home at the height that your hips will allow, starting off really low and gradual, and as your hip starts to warm up, you're getting more fluid into the joint, and everything's starting to move better then we can start to go higher. Now we take this and we start to extend it now into a kick to the front, and then a back mule kick or turning back side kick, and then a sweeping hook kick. And then we keep repeating this. Front, back, and a sweeping hook kick. Good. And after you've done this for maybe half a dozen times on this side, then we're gonna go one more, and then we're gonna switch sides, and we're gonna Put our other hand on the wall and please continue along with us. Knee to the front, knee to the back, knee in a circle. Good, good. Nice. Now as you're doing this you want to protect your support leg, the leg that you're standing on, your non-kicking leg, and you do that by having the weight more on the ball of your foot so that your heel can start to move and pivot around, protecting the knee depending on what's part of the cycle of the kick you're in. And now we turn it into a kick. So it's a front kick, back kick, and sweeping hook kick. And as you do these kicks, take your time to really extend on each kick. That front kick instructor, Ian is really pushing his hips forward, and extending on the kick. The back kick is the same. He's looking over his shoulder, so he's getting that flexibility in the upper body. And then the big sweep, which is really a lot of strength and flexibility, and you want to point your foot and kind of reach out and slap towards your target. Let's just two, two more. Good job. Last one. Good, now Instructor Ian is going to face towards me and go down on all fours. And from here, he's going to look over his left shoulder and do a turning back side kick in the air. So he looks over and kicks out, holds the kick, toes are curled in, hitting with that heel and then back and then he switches to the other side. Good. And then as he continues with his kick, each time he kicks out, he tries to lift his knee closer and closer towards his armpit to begin the kick, chambers up higher, and then fires out the kick. Each time he does the kick, of course, he's gonna try and elevate that kick a little bit higher. It keeps going up and up and up. This is actually a very good self-defense kick if you ever get pushed to the ground, and then all of a sudden now you can kick from that ground. Good, nicely done. Now that we got the kick going, we know what we're doing. Now he's just going to start to move it faster. So he's just going to throw the kicks a little bit quicker, fire them out. Good job. Nicely done. 
And now Instructor Ian is going to face the camera in the same body position on knees and hands. And he's going to loosen up his hip by doing the fire hydrant stretch to the right. So he lifts up the leg, gets it as high as he can, holds it for a few seconds, which works on the strength of his abductors. And then he closes his legs down and lifts up the other side. So when you're bringing your legs together, that's your adductors. And when you're lifting your leg away from the center line, that's your abductor. So it's, this is an abductor exercise and a real good stretch for the adductor muscles. Nice. Now instructor Ian is going to, from here, uh, stand up and go into a side break fall. Um, you can just stay in the ground. From this position, he's gonna go and do that opening of the hip exercise, which is gonna help with his particular point hook kicks. So he starts in an open position with his foot on the ground, the other leg is straight, kicks to neutral with the point kick, and then follows through, closing the hip, getting extra power, and follow through, and then coming back. Do a few of those nice and slow, and then you can start to build up the speed. Notice he still has the hands up, he's looking in the direction towards which he's kicking, and uh, getting nice planter foot, foot position for contact. Remember, we're not hitting with the foot though, we're we're pointing the foot and the contact is on the ankle or the tibia, which is the shin. And now from here, after the at the end of this kick, he's going to go into a windmill and switch sides. And then start doing the same kick on the other side. This again is like one of those bread and butter uh, practices that you do almost every day to get your hip fluid, to work on your flexibility, your strength, and to get that motion of a, of a nice summation of forces with your point kick. Good. Let's just go one more, please. Good. And now getting up, um, levitation, kip up. Oh, tactical get up is good. And now we're going to go into our review of kicks from white belt right through to green stripe. And for the high belts, this would be a great time to review your kicks. We're in back to me. So we're starting off with a spear kick. So I'm just going to let Instructor Ian just start doing spear kick. And as he's doing his, his spear kick, you notice his knee is nice and tight, his heels tucked in. So he's getting really lots of lively action in his knee. Uh, the example of not doing that would be this, where you lift up the leg and it's already almost straight and there's just this little flick at the end. You really want to tighten that up. Good. There we go. Now we're moving on to our front snap kick. Has similar hip motion. The knee more points and goes through into the kick. As you're extending, your foot is also extended just like it was with the spear kick, but your toes are curled up. So now the, the idea of this uh, front snap kick is hitting with a ball of the foot. Nice, let's just hit two more. Last one, and now we're on into a modified front snap kick. Now a modified front snap kick is a closer range type of kick. Imagine I got hold of instructor Ian's curly locks and I'm pulling him in, and he's gonna kick out my back leg with his heel. So he's turning his foot to the outside and he's hitting with that heel. Good, nicely done. Let's go two more. And then we're on into our uh, yellow belt kicks. Good, thank you, sir. So in the yellow belt kick, we're really focusing in on the stance of an open neck stance into a side kick because it just lends itself to the proper technique. So Instructor Ian's in a horse stance. He does this crossover step into open X. He stopped right there. Notice the spine, the coccyx, which is your tailbone, is pointing directly towards the kicking target or the opponent. And the heel is there. He's nice and low, his hands are up, his chin is in, you can see where he's going. And now he elevates and then extends his kick out. Hitting with the heel, steps down, and then we just keep repeating. What I suggest you do is you either back to it like instructor Ian, switch sides, or you're just going back and forth, back and forth, and practice your kick. When you're doing your open X, try and have it nice and wide. You're not crossing your feet over too much, getting into a twisted willow, and not having the uh, balance to perform the thrust of the kick. Good, now let's take a look at the kick one more time here. As he crosses over and freezes, okay, he's still stable, he's solid. If this leg was over here, it's not wide enough, so he wants to keep it wide. All right now when he lifts up his, uh, his knee, he's compact. When he fires out his knee, he can have a slight lean to get his head away from contact. And then the reach chamber comes right back to the center line so he decides where he wants to put his foot down, as opposed to falling down. Thank you, sir. sir. All right, now the next uh, yellow belt kick is our inside thigh kick. So this is your, your kind of swinging at your hip pendulum type of kick with the inside ridge of your foot. 
typically this is only done when you have footwear on that's something substantial not flip-flops certainly not at the beach but you're just kicking into the person's shin the shin or the tibia is highly innervated lots of nerves there you'll you'll remember bumping your shin on something and it's quite painful so this is a distraction kick and it's very useful in self-defense all right now we're moving on to our orange belts and uh, we're looking at the point kick now the point kick is a hinge kick like the front snap kick except for instead of having the hips this way all right you got the hips now stacking throughout the kick one hip going on top of the other let's take a look at it good nice chamber out and back so the heels cut as close to the buttocks or the glutes as possible and then going up now this is a really nice form basic kick he wants to add a little bit more power is going to go past the center line and come back again so it's closing the hip a little bit at the end nice beautiful kick so now the point kick can be thrown so that you don't have to change your stance as much so in realistic self-defense that might be useful let's take a look at it from the side position instructor um, Ian is going to throw a kick to my leg but it's going to be a point kick and as he throws his point kick and I block can you do a point kick please sir so as he throws his point kick you notice how his, this hand went back he's now in a side position which means he only has two of his weapons you know one hand one leg to, to attack with but with a 45 degree point kick he doesn't this foot barely turns and his upper body sustains his position so now he's got both hands to hit with and a leg so he comes in 45 so as I'm doing this it's like a whipping action as I go in my partner kicks and I kick back and forth so uh, let's do a couple of those as instructor Ian demonstrates facing the camera a couple of those 45 degree point kicks nice Good. And but oh, now we finish off with our green strike kicks, which is our back kick, back side, not mule. But we're going to get you back to the wall or hand on a chair or couch. And my uh, the instructor Ian is going to elevate his kicking leg to tabletop. He doesn't even, he's going to look over or drape his chin over his right shoulder if he's kicking with his right leg. And then he fires on his kick. Good. So that's your back side kick. Someone's coming in behind you to attack, then that kick is just coming up and firing in, hitting with its heel again. Nicely done. Now we're going to go to, um, from that kick, we're going to go to the uh, back leg kick. Sorry, um, hang on, I just lost my, my spot here. Um, turning back side kick, thank you. So let's go to the turning back side kick. So facing the camera, um, instructor Ian steps across the pivots and fires on the kick. Let's take a look at that again. Turns, fires. So there's a couple ways of doing this. The first way, instructor Ian does not move his front foot. When he turns, he's now into an open X stance, then he fires up the kick and returns all the way through. Another way is to step across with the lead leg. Now you're in a narrow kneel stance and then you fire out your kick. Let's do that one more time. I wish I could kick like that. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now we're inviting instructor Brad in and we're gonna go through some striking. Afternoon, how are we going? Um, I realized I don't have a partner. You guys don't have partners. I have a partner. I'm going to use my partner today. Today, you are instructor Ian. Everything he does is what you're doing. So we're both going to go right leg back into a good stance. We're going to go through the whole boxing drill set. So I want you to work on it at home. I want you to work on your footwork to make sure everything's turning. So it's not about killing anybody. It's about going through it slowly. Step and glide. Jab. Cross. I throw with my lead hand, duck and weave, cross, hook, uppercut, nice. Instructor Ian steps back, I step back, step and glide, jab, cross. Now I'm throwing the hook with the other hand. Instructor Ian is going to duck and weave, step, square up, hook, cross, hook. Awesome. Back into the stance. Those two again. Step and glide, jab, cross, duck and weave from the front hand, cross. Hook, uppercut, nice. Step and glide, jab, cross. Duck and weave from the rear hand, step, square up, hook, cross, hook. Awesome. Those are the two duck and weaves. Now we're gonna add the two slipping in. As instructor Ian comes to step and glide, jab, cross. I throw the slip with my front hand. It's coming at his head. He slips to the back. Weight is on his back leg, he's coming back with the cross. Hook, cross. Nice. Back again. Step and glide. Jab cross. Gonna throw the punch with the rear hand. He's gonna slip to the front. 
Weight is on the front leg, indicating he's going to throw a hook, cross, hook. Awesome. That was four different steps. Eventually what's going to happen, you're going to take the stepping glide out of this. You're going to start with it for the first time, and then I'm going to throw what I want. So I know you don't have an opponent looking at you, but in your head you can see them saying, okay, he threw the lead hook, he threw the rear hook, he threw a slip. So it's like you're shadow boxing, but you know the drill set. So here's what's going to happen. Step aside. Jab, cross. I'm going to throw the hook. You step, cross, hook, cross, hook. I throw the front hook. Duck and weave. Cross, hook, cross. I throw the front slip and goes back. I throw the rear slip. I throw the rear hook. So you're going to go through it just like that. Break it out from the pattern that it was into a non-pattern. But I'm going to add to that pattern. So we've done the two duck and weaves. We've done the two slips. Now I'm going to do the two kicks. So if I'm in my stance and I turn my leg to instructor Ian's rear leg, he's going to throw a kick. Because I didn't indicate that's the side I want it. If I turn it to the other side, he's going to throw the kick with the front leg. I want you to concentrate on not shifting, then throwing that kick. I want you just to be happy weight, 50-50 in your stance, and throw the kick. Does that make sense? I'm sure, sure. you can't answer. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, here we go. We're going to start again. Step right, step cross. Duck and weave. Cross, hook, uppercut. Kick. Kick. Slip. Nice. Gonna go like that. Like I said, you're gonna break it out. You can go through them one, two, three, four, five, six, and then break it up. Take the step and glide and the jab cross out and mix them up. So now I'm gonna keep adding to it. I'm the big bully. I'm gonna encroach on instructor Ian. He has two choices at this point. One is to push me back, and as he does, he's falling with a kick to get, get me away. Back, pass come up, step and glide, dug and weave. Nice. All of those happen. So that's number one. Number two is when I encroach. Instructor Ian is going to grab my head, pull me down into a tie clinch, and drop knees. One, two, three. Push me away, followed up by a kick, which creates a space. Back into a step and glide. Jab cross, dagger weave, cross hook, uppercut, slip, slip, leg. Leg, leg, awesome. Those are the drill sets. I want you to slow them down. Like I said, I want you to see perfect foot form. Jab, cross, you looked at yourself. Okay, I've got a nice ball exchange. I've extended, my body's across myself. Nice, try and throw the hook. Both ball exchanges, elbows flat, hook is out. Hit it with the right two knuckles that you would be hitting with. You don't have anybody to hit, and if you do, that's great. But if you don't, I want you to slow it down. Like I said, work on everything you can possibly work on. Look where your hand is. Look where your foot is. Look where your body is. Look where your head is. Look where you're looking. You got anything to add, sir? No. No, going slow in the air is how you get better. Okay? It's, that's why it really improves your form, guys. So go slow, copy yourself in the mirror, or look at yourself in the mirror, and really feel like you had that ball exchange going. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask instructor Ian to do it by himself without me. He's gonna start, and he's just gonna shadow box doing the exact forms we just did without anybody in front of him. Sir. Awesome job, Mr. King. Thank you. So, like I said, once again, if you wish to do them and you haven't seen us do it before, most of you guys have done it with me or Instructor Ian, I want you to go out of order. If you haven't, do them in order. Slip, slip, duck and weave, duck and weave, slip, slip, kick, kick, encroaching. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We're going to turn you back to Instructor Chris for Coach's Corner. Namaste. Thank you, gentlemen. Hello, everybody.
Um, with our philosophy sessions, normally with the uh, adults anyway, there's a lot of interaction and sharing of ideas. And I just wanted to go back to that philosophy that we have at the Dow that, you know, with the younger students, we're sharing concepts and stories. And hopefully they get to go home and talk about that with their parents. And yet in, in a big class, it's hard to get make it interactive. With the adult classes that tend to be a little bit smaller, uh, we can do that. With the teens, sometimes we get interaction, sometimes we don't. Today, um, or just a reminder, these are just ideas for you to think about, to maybe adopt, to try out, and, uh, and then see what works for you. We have, uh, we have no ownership on this, and we're, we, don't, we don't think of ourselves in any way, shape, or form as having mastered these concepts. Um, we're just sharing them so that we can all together grow um, in our perspective and the way we deal with things. So today's philosophy is, is about fear. And fear, I think, is uh, something that I tried to avoid my whole life, Re thinking that fear was um, something that uh, would make me a less of a person, that if I was afraid of stuff, I am not showing that courage, that I, I wouldn't perform in a way that made me feel proud of myself. But later on, I started to discover through the help of many, many people, uh, including a friend of mine I was just talking to yesterday, Bob Levy, that fear is just an emotion and you can feel, feel fear and not act fearful. Right? I can feel angry and not go around punching holes in walls and I can certainly know that my body is feeling fear which helps me to inform myself if I'm willing to ask that question, what am I really scared of? So let's look at some of the major fears. Um, one of my major fears is as I was growing up and I'm still growing up, uh, maybe growing out a little bit more now, but uh, still growing is that I fear disappointing people and it got to the point where I realized I'm going to disappoint just about everybody including myself because I'm human and I'm going to make mistakes and I'm not going to meet everybody's expectations so up comes another concept I would rather be disliked for who I am than loved for I am not so I, instead of playing the games to try and impress everybody and be that special person that everybody loves that's a really tough road to go down. It's exhausting and it's not being you. You're not practicing you. You're practicing playing all these games and roles and putting on different masks in order to be approved of. And that in a sense, in its own way, creates a lot of fear. Because when are you ever, when are you ever good enough? Another fear is the fear of dying. Um, another fear is being alone. Another fear is not living the good life dying before you actually figure out what your purpose was. So there's a ton of fears out there, and most of us share these common fears to a certain extent. So facing your fear is first acknowledging your fear, feeling it, allowing it to flow through your body and saying, okay, what is it that I'm truly afraid of? And now I have choices. So some fears you might feel are unavoidable. We might be in a situation with the pandemic right now where we feel there's a lot that's out of our control. And that in itself is pretty scary. And to some extent, maybe some of it is out of our control. It's unavoidable. And then all we can do is accept our fear and decide how we want to navigate it. Someone who's got a terminal illness and knows that they're, or feels pretty sure that they're gonna die in a month or two, they may feel that's unavoidable. But now their choices are, how do I want to perceive my life, how I want to carry on with this precious time that I have left? In other words, how do I want to express myself? Fears, if we make choices from fear, fear tends to be a tunnel. And we don't see all the options. All we see is the fear. All we see is the obstacles. And then we dwell on it. And we wrap up ourselves up in it. And this is very limiting. Whereas if you can feel the fear and say, I have op options and I can see the obstacles, please let's not put our head in the sand like an ostrich and feel like we shouldn't be taking a look at the things that are going to come up in our life that are going to be challenging. No, see them, plan for them, and plan how you want to either go through them or around them or to absorb them or to learn from them. One way of dealing with a fear is changing your perspective on that fear. For example, when I said to you, one of my biggest fears was the fear of not being good enough, of always letting other people down, 
of other people not approving of me because I just don't measure up to their standards. That type of fear to me, uh, when I looked at it, I went, that's illogical. And it's partly illogical because I know I'm probably always going to let someone down if I'm going to be who I am. And the next thing is, um, with that, uh, you know, understanding that not everybody's going to like you, not everybody's going to love you, it starts to put it into perspective that you can just be who you are. Right? And that version of who you are hopefully is constantly growing. It's not staying stagnant. You're constantly learning from other people's opinion about you. But the most important one is that which you hold for yourself, which drives your values, which allows you to look at your life and say, this is how I want to express myself. Anyway, thanks for listening. Um, fear is good. You know, fear is a good thing because it helps us to create a perspective on life. And then we just decide, I'm going to navigate around this fear. I'm going to go through this fear. Am I changing my perspective on it? How do I want to deal with this? And one other perspective is note your fears, but keep optimistic. Keep looking for what you want. As you've heard a million times in the studio, focus on what you want, not on what you don't want. Have a great day. Namaste.